What if one of the most influential intellectuals alive told you that climate change is not humanity's biggest crisis, but an excuse for authoritarian control? I'd say, I don't care how influential or intellectual this person thinks he is, I'd want him to present his evidence and his sources for that evidence so I can check them. My view as a scientist who's capable of assessing data. I also wouldn't take his word that he's capable of assessing data in a subject he's never studied. Now, if you're one of the few people who still hasn't heard of Dr. Peterson, his meteoric rise to fame has brought him to the forefront of the world of psychology. In short, I'm not going to follow the opinion of someone just because I'm supposed to be impressed with their intellectual prowess and popularity. The most influential public intellectual in the Western world right now. He who has a why can bear any how. Really, really, right. really profound. Wow, so deep. Now, when I first came across Jordan Peterson, I was impressed with how he handled interviews in his own field, and I agreed with a lot of his observations on society. But that's all about the human world and the world of opinion. Once his head got big enough for him to think that he could become an expert in everything... Peterson waded into the very different world of geophysics and was soon way out of his depth, because physics is about facts and figures. I've listened to hours and hours of Jordan Peterson's interviews and monologues on the subject of climate change, trying to find his assessments of data, the thing he says he's good at. It turns out there are remarkably few. But I've collected them, and what I'm going to show you in the next series of videos is that when Peterson does present facts and figures among the hours of philosophical waffle, a minimum amount of checking shows that he gets most of them wrong. He also changes the data according to whatever argument he's trying to make at the time. Now let me remind you that science can only thrive in the absence of a political agenda. I didn't say that, Jordan Peterson did, and I agree. I'm sure Peterson will live up to his credo, and it won't be necessary for me to inject this obvious truism into everything he says. So, if we all agree... Many then... of the conservatives that I talk to now, small-c conservatives, are beginning to push back against the climate apocalypse mongers. Okay, apart from that one slip... Well, on the leftists, especially the radical types, their whole damn doctrine is the most powerful. Okay, those ones... I'm sure Peterson has no political agenda, and that's the last time I'll need to show this quote in the video series. Anyway, let's start off easy. Tell me what you think this retweet from Jordan Peterson refers to. Apparently, global green transition cost is now $14 trillion plus. Seriously, what do you think that means? I guess, like me and millions of other people who saw this, it looks like we're spending over $14 trillion switching from fossil fuel energy to green energy, like wind and solar. And you probably find that quite alarming. OK, I get it. Because you're seeing this in a video that debunks internet bullshit, you're probably on full alert. But just relax your guard a bit and admit that if you saw this alarming figure in a casual tweet, this is exactly what you'd think. If we'd stuck with fossil fuels, we'd still have that money in our pockets, right? That seems to be what Peterson thinks too. He says this money's being squandered on what he calls planetary worship. If you are alarmed by this staggeringly high figure, don't worry, that's what it's designed to do. Because when it comes to alarmism, it doesn't matter whether the alarmists are supporting fossil fuels, as they are here, or opposing them. Alarmists, by definition, are deliberately pushing your buttons with false alarms. So I have learned to ask a simple question when I see stuff like this that alarms me. Is this accurate? Where does this information come from? If we go to the original tweet from Bjorn Longborg, his source is in the fine print below. No, closer. Come on, a lot closer. There. It comes from this report by the financial news agency Bloomberg. It turns out that what Bloomberg is showing is not the cost to you and me of switching from fossil fuels to clean energy, but the amount of money companies are investing in clean energy. That includes not only building clean energy power sources instead of fossil fuels, but also in making industry and transport more energy efficient. 
So, for example, if a new power plant is needed and the choice is between a coal-fired power station and a wind farm, and the power company opts for a wind farm, this is marked down as part of what Lomberg calls a transition cost. But if the company has opted to build a coal-fired power station instead, this would not be called a transition cost. On the graph, no cost would be shown at all. It doesn't matter whether it's clean energy or fossil fuel energy, we always need these new energy investments. Because over time, coal-fired power stations get old, oil fields dry up, solar panels need to be replaced, and wind turbines wear out. On top of that, demand for energy is always increasing. So, if we look at a graph of clean energy investment represented by the bottom three colours of blue and greens, and then add fossil fuel energy investment, shown in light blue, you can see the steady rise, except for a dip during the pandemic. What Lomborg has done is airbrush out the cost of oil and coal investment and only show the investment in clean energy, and then take out the word investment. If Lomborg had been around in the early 20th century and working as a lobbyist for the horse and buggy industry, he'd be putting out pamphlets complaining about the alarming cost of the transition from horsepower to oil, simply because Standard Oil was investing so much money in new oil fields, oil exploration, oil production and oil transport. Now wait, I'm ahead of you. Some people are going to argue that investing in a wind farm instead of a coal-fired power station is money squandered because a coal-fired power station is cheaper. That argument could have been made 20 years ago, but not anymore. According to the source they trust and cite, Bloomberg, clean energy is actually cheaper than fossil fuels. Finally, you may want to argue that the money is being squandered even if it is being invested in energy for the future and even if it is cheaper than fossil fuel alternatives because ultimately we're paying for this energy every time we switch on a light bulb. So, here's the kicker. Most of this 14 plus trillion dollars investment in clean energy is coming from Asia, predominantly China. It's right there in Lomborg's own source. Now, it's not surprising that Lomborg got this wrong and tried to pull the wool over everyone's eyes by airbrushing out the word investment because he and his lobby group are paid to produce this kind of nonsense. I've caught him out before. While researching my video on his claims about electric cars, I contacted his office to get a source for one of his many spurious claims, and I discovered that Lomborg had, once again, airbrushed out a result that completely crushed his idea that electric cars are less energy efficient. And then he changed the figure that was left to give the result he wanted. Welcome to the world of alternative facts. But this video and the ones that will follow aren't about Lomborg. We already know he cooks the books. This series is about the guy who was gullible enough to believe his claim and pass it on without checking it, even though he's supposedly the scientist who's capable of assessing data. And that isn't the only nonsense tweet Peterson has passed on. He's also repeated a phrase from a story about Al Gore's 2007 testimony to Congress talking about carbon dioxide emissions from cars, power plants, buildings and other sources heating the Earth's atmosphere. The science is settled. Peterson calls that a lie. OK, so show us. Even the climate scientists Peterson thinks are on his side, the so-called sceptics he thinks agree with him, the experts he interviews and quotes, all now admit that CO2 emissions from cars, power plants, buildings and other sources are heating the Earth. If Peterson thinks that's not the case, then where's the data he claims to be able to assess? Where's the science? All he gives us to support his claim is a declaration written by a political lobby group and signed by assorted lawyers, ship designers, dentists and other professionals. That's why the word is in there. Who know as much about climate science as Peterson does? In fact, as a psychologist, he could have signed it too. So I wonder what happened to Peterson's own declaration that science can only thrive in the absence of a political agenda. Look, anyone on X can retweet scientific gibberish, but Peterson is supposed to be the intellectual heavyweight of the age. One of the most influential intellectuals alive? The most influential public intellectual in the Western world right now. A man who claims to be capable of assessing data. 
And yet all he can do to debunk 120 years of solid science is retweet a political declaration signed by a bunch of amateurs, which is something anyone with an IQ of 85 can do. OK, enough said for now. These dumb tweets are just an appetizer. The full meal of Peterson bullshit is yet to come. So do look out for the next cause. And remember, if you want to support this channel, please don't send money to me. I'm happy to make these videos to support an innovative charity that provides healthcare in exchange for forest protection, a way to help the environment and the health of your fellow human beings. Details are in the video description, so please take a look. Thanks to all those who will donate or who have already donated.